Hello everybody, welcome to one of my videos. Today we're playing on the C64 today, as you can see by the screen, we're playing Dragon Skull. Came out in 1985, developed by Ultimate Play the Game. This is a tremendous game, I've owned this game since the mid 80s. I was very, very young of course, but anyway, this is a game I've enjoyed and I thought why not, let's do a long play of it. And this is Jamie from Wondrous Games, Dragon Skull, C64. Let's go! Okay, this is another game, it's a Dragon Skull on the C64, a video game developed and released by Ultimate Play the Game in late 1985. It's a sequel to Staff of Karnath, Entombed and Black Witch. First thing we've got to do is deactivate those electrical beams. We do that by standing on a star. It's the final title to feature the aristocrat adventurer Sir Arthur Pendragon. The game was created by brothers Dave and Robert Thomas. Right, now we deactivate the energy beams, we go through the skull's mouth. This game is tremendous. Start the game off with five lives. At the top of the screen are our items. However, some of them are available to you and some of them are not. You use the arrow keys on the keyboard to select the one you want. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a spade yet. But that's what we've got to try and find now. But we do have a weapon called a magical orb. Which we need here. There are two ants and guarding a spade. One target shot hit with a magical orb and we gain our spade. Spade. Once found, this allows Sir Arthur to attempt to dig a hole at his current position. And we have a magical orb. This will allow the player to throw an orb at enemies in the direction he is facing. However, you cannot use this if you're using the Invincibility Energy Cloak. Just to the right of the spade icon is an Invincibility Energy Cloak icon. It does look like a handkerchief. However, we don't have it yet. So over here, this is where we use a spade. So use the keyboard, select the spade, and dig. We're not digging for gold, we are actually digging for a cloak. And luckily, we have found one. The Magical Energy Cloak. Once found, this allows Sir Arthur to become invulnerable to most hazards. Once activated, you will need more energy to replenish before you can reuse it again. Okay, so I'm going to use it absolutely wisely. There are areas in this game where you desperately need it. So use it at the right times. Now this game is tremendous, but there's so many enemies in this game that you are absolutely defenseless against. There are cases where you just have to just go with it and take hits. And there's plenty of those in this game. Also on the right side, there is a jump. Now I have to admit, I have never ever used it. I don't know what's the best time to use it. They don't really need it in this game. But we'll stick with the energy orb. We're going to need it very, very soon. Now this room is the lava room. And there's absolutely nothing you can do without the energy cloak. Now you're probably thinking, Jamie, you do have an energy cloak. Yes, I do. However, later on in the game, there's two of those rooms back to back. And that is when you need the energy cloak. And this is where we need a spade. Because we've lost and life. Now we dig there and we find another life. Now some of those are bad and some of them are good. So pick them wisely. Dig wisely. Right, so we arrive at our first dragon. So, unfortunately no energy bar for this dragon. So we need some well-timed shots. Now this game has quite a few of these dragons and you cannot progress through here without destroying and killing the dragon. Now each dragon has a different colour, but they all fire the same bullet. And he'll go backwards and forwards to try and avoid my firepower, which is exactly what I'm doing with his. It does take quite a few hits, and it all just depends on how well you hit him. If you hit him right in the middle, that'll take more damage, which you expect. Now each one of your lives, you can take a certain number of hits before your life is taken away. And you'll know this because one, your place will flash, and two, you'll hear a sound. And then when you lose a life, your face will turn into a skull. They can earn additional lives to score, and of course you can dig for them. Providing you have the spades to do the job. So it would be nice to have an energy bar for this boss, but unfortunately it doesn't have it. Now it's not a high scoring game. As you see, I've only got 1000 points so far. I reckon he's nearly dead now. Once dead, we go across that bridge. This game is tremendous. I actually bought this with my own money back in 1985. Bought it from John Menzies, which is in Hampstead Valley in Kent at the time. Right, we kill the boss and we move on. 
Dragon Skull is an arcade adventure game set in isometric perspective set on the fictional island of Dragon Skull. We must find and destroy the Skull of Souls. The gameplay is more about exploration than puzzle solving when compared to its predecessors. Right, we've got another area and another bridge. Now, unfortunately, we cannot go across that bridge because we get hit by a flashing skull and that drains our energy. So what we've got to do here is kill 10 green demons on the other side of the water. When you kill 10, you then progress across the bridge. And of course, it's never going to be an easy task. We have bouncing skulls and evil flying wasps. And so many of these old school games have evil wasps or bumblebees as enemies. However, every enemy on the screen can be killed with a single shot. You can go underneath them, or if you're jammy enough, you can actually kill two with one shot. You need 10,000 points to get additional life. And I have to admit, I've never played any of those other games. This is the only one I've played. And you don't have to keep tabs of how many you're killing, because you'll know. If you've killed enough, it'll go incredibly silent, and all enemies will disappear off the screen. And then we progress with the uh, story. However, you do get a choice of routes off the screen. You can either go left and go for another life, or go right and continue with the story. At the moment, I don't need another life, but I am taking quite a few hits here. That's probably going to result in losing a life very, very soon. This is actually very, very loud on my headphones right now. It's quite time to shoot me, it's a case of just waiting them to be in the right place at the right time. Okay, we ended that with 4,130 points. So now I'm going to go and get another life, even though I don't actually need it, but I have taken quite a few hits. So, get the spade ready. We're going to need it very, very soon. So go through this top door, and we'll go right. Now watch out for falling rocks and drips and bats with skull faces. Go for the skull. Now the game received a 53% rating from Zap64, who criticised the game on the poor 3D, weak sound and lack of originality. All three reviewers expressed gratitude that it was the last in the Arthur Pendragon series. Right, we've got another life, and I'm hoping that will actually replenish your hit points as well. I hope so. Go back to your other weapon. So now we'll progress with the story, but first we'll go back with the way we just came. Now that jump, which you got at the top right, I don't know when you use it. I've never actually used that jump before. I don't think you actually do need it in this game. But as random as it sounds, there's also a pause button up there. Okay, on we go. But this game is tremendous, I love it. Watch out for the bouncing eyeball. You cannot kill him, even with a well-timed energy orb shot. And once again, another lava room. Yes, it's caused damage. And yes, we do have the cloak. But I'm going to save it for the more difficult one later. So let's head towards the next dragon. Now some rooms will have drips. A red drip and a black drip. Now if you get hit by a flashing drip, that actually does work to your advantage. But it's very difficult to do. Right, eyeballs doing their bouncing thing, but this time they shoot energy shots at you. Laser shots. Again, you cannot kill them. If you're jamming enough to get one of those flashing ones, you get rewarded. Right, weapon is on standby. Now this one, do not dig here, only a fool would do that. That will actually release a demon. Which will harm you. Right, another dragon. But this time, a different colour. He does exactly the same movements and exactly the same firepower, which is a different colour. But he must be dealt with. Even the room is pretty much identical. So again, hit him where it hurts. Hit him closer to the face, it's going to cause a lot more damage than if you hit him in the tail or the wings. So at the moment, I've got 4,430 points, and I've lost one life. Get to 10,000, which is still quite a long way away to get additional life. And you don't earn a lot of points by killing dragons. Which is quite surprising, because you put quite a lot of work and effort into it. A lot of work for such little reward. 
But then I suppose the reward is allowing you to progress across the bridge. Now you could go closer to him if you so wish, but then you have less time to react to his firepower. I find it's best to keep your distance. Each dragon is a different colour. There we go! Another one gone. So, once again, we progress around this maze. Now, the game was developed by Ultimate Play the Game. Ultimate Play the Game was a British video game developer funded in 1982 by ex-arcade game developers Tim and Chris Stamper. Ultimate released a series of successful games for the ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CBC, BBC Micro, MSX and C64 from 1983 until its closure in 1988. Ultimate Play the Game are perhaps best remembered for their big selling titles Jetpack and Saber Wolf, each of which selling over 300,000 copies in 1983 and 1984 respectively. By the time the label's last use in 1988 on a retrospective compilation, Ultimate had evolved into Rare and moved on to developing titles for Nintendo. Rare was purchased by Microsoft in 2002 for $377 million, a record price for video game developer, and now develops exclusively for Microsoft platforms such as Xbox and Microsoft Windows. There we go. Right, we're back to familiar territory. The only difference now is the enemy on the other side of the water, and how many have got to kill of that enemy on the other side of the water? I think it's 14. But once again, we have bouncing skulls and more wasps. Kill them for additional points. At the moment, we have 6,120. It's not enough for additional life. Two lives have been lost so far. I think it's probably easier that those enemies appear from the right side rather than the left side. Makes it for easier kills. So kill whatever you can, whenever you can. Especially if you just lost another life. 6,610 points now. And three lives lost. Again, I've not been counting how many I've been killing, but I'm too busy weeding. Must be close, though. Must be close. 6,930. There we go. That is the end of that. 7,230. Right, we head left. Watch out for drips and bats and falling debris. Now this area is not particularly long, but we have not a lot of lice remaining. More bouncing skulls with legs, shooting lasers, which can't be killed. Right, we approach two lava rooms, so... There has to be the sharpest knife in the drawer, we're going to use the invisibility cloak. We are now invincible, and in the nick of time too, because this would probably drain all of my remaining lives. Now you cannot shoot when you're using this. But this is the next boss, but unfortunately we can't shoot until it's worn off. It's worn off. Now this one is purple. But again, does the same movement and shoots the same bullets. And we've got to do the same thing. Hit him multiple times. Until he breaks up into lots and lots of pixels. Time it well. Avoid his attacks and hit him with yours. 7,730. Ah, I just realised you actually earn points by hitting him. I didn't know that. I was surprised you do get more reward. So if you don't get points, you're not hitting him. There we go. Get some serious life back, but there's not much left. That was right in the face that time. There we go. 8,230 points. And he's gone. Okay, we're now we're heading to the final stages of the game. Now, Commodore user Eugene Lacey was also unimpressed by the game, stating that the Pendragon series of games have been dragged on for too long. Although it was said to be the most difficult in the series with its hair wrenching puzzles, it was otherwise weak as its predecessors with poor graphics and appalling animation to the lead character. Lacey continued the review by stating that it was a disappointing conclusion to what was a good run of games. Games I've not played, it's the only one I've played, however I've always enjoyed this game. I've owned it for a very, very long time indeed. Pretty much all my life. 
Right, familiar territory once again for the third and final time. And we've got a ghoul. A ghoul that is shooting the same weapon I do. Now getting hit from that drains a lot of energy. Now I've only got two lives left, but we are very, very close to getting another life now. But once again, we've still got these bouncing skulls and evil wasps. And they're quite difficult to hit because they're so small. And of course, they're bouncing up and down. Try and avoid them at all costs, Jamie. 9,810 points we have. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to gain that life and then lose it again. There we go, we've got it. How long can we keep it? 20 of these ghouls to kill. Now, the final stretches of this game, there are some more lava rooms. But fortunately, my cloak has run out of energy. You can't use a cloak with no energy. So we're going to have to run in it, or walk in it in this case, and take damage. Right. So far, so good. Once again, he's on the right side. He's on the side I want him to be. Jamie getting stung in the face by wasps. There we go. Life has been taken away. It's going to be difficult now. Don't take any more hits. Don't lose any more lives. No idea how many to go. But you'll know when it happens. Forces are not going to get easier. They're always going to get more and more difficult. And longer in this case. Blimey, how many more? I think what I'll probably do is when I upload this, I'll probably have a... a tally on the screen. There we go. Clear. We have two lives. Mm -mm -mm. So, there's a risk if you're willing to take it. There's a lava room on this left side, but once you get through that, there's actually another life. So, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. Watch out for the debris and the drips and the bats with skull faces. Over here is another skull, which will open up, and we progress through. But we're taking so much hit, so much damage. Now, getting hit by one of those flashing drips, I can't remember what it actually does, but it rewards you some way or another. But it's, it's, it's very, very lucky if you can do it. I can't remember if it's additional life or cloak energy, I'm not sure. Now, some of these rooms do look very, very identical, so it's quite easy to get a little bit lost. But one more death, and that will be game over for me. So we go right, then up. And then watch out for evil bouncing eyeballs. Every hit is not good. Go right, and then up. And hopefully, nearby, there'll be another digging section where we get another life. Which is very much needed right now. Right, get your spade ready. And we're digging. And that was in the nick of time. Now, I don't know if that replenishes your hit points or your current life. I have no idea. Right, lava room. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna burn. Right, up and up. Right, we've got a dragon to kill, but energy and life is poo. So, Jamie, get your weapon ready. We've got another dragon, but this time it's blue. At the moment, we have 12,420. They can earn additional lives on this final boss. But however, this is not the final boss. Not yet. We're close. We've got to try and defeat this dragon without taking any damage, Jamie, because we're close to game over right now. Even though know, the game over section is a good section with good music, I don't want it right now. Try and hit your target, which I'm not doing a lot of at the moment. It's going to go down to the wire. This is really going to go down to the wire. 
And that's usually the way with more of this game. It's never straightforward down there. Just keep out of his range of his fire attacks. Losing it now is going to be devastating. My TV's going to turn itself off, but you can't see. Oh dear. Got away with it though. One thousand three hundred. No, thirteen thousand one hundred twenty. Come on, dragon, be in the right place at the right time. There we go. That's the final dragon. Can we do it? I don't know. We've got the right weapon. Life's is rubbish, though. Right, again in life. Okay, final section. We've got to hit this skull. And every time you do, you gain another extra life. How cool is that? Don't know many boss battles that does that. Right, he's in the wrong place. However, when he hits you, your energy drains a lot. So he shoots two bullets. One more than I do. He needs to come this way. Right, look coming this way. Uh oh. How close was that? My lord. There we go, people. That's the end of the game. Congratulations, you completed Track and Skull. This concludes the Pentagon Adventure series. We hope you have enjoyed playing them. Tremendous. But I must play the other ones. I've played it in a very, very wrong order. But there we go, that is Dragon Skull on the C64, a tremendous game, came out in 1985, and this is Jay Meat from Morganist Games, please like, please comment, please share, and please subscribe to my channel, my Facebook fan page, my Instagram, also on Twitch, just type in Morganist Games, you'll find it fairly easy, please remember to click the bell icon, that will notify you videos that will be fantastic, we're not doing these sort of videos, I do hammer beat making, and live streams every Friday night, you can time at 8 o'clock, it's all about waiting, until next time, take it easy, ciao bye, see ya! Came out in 1985, Developed and published by Unlimited. Okay, it's Ultimate. Not Unlimited. And the final game to feature the adventurer, Sir Arthur Pendragon. Pen Pendragon. It's a video game for the Commodore 64, developed and released by Ultimate Play the Game in late 19. JB, when you're reading that, don't walk into NG Beams. It's the last game in the series to feature Sir Arthur Pendragon. First thing we've got to do is deactivate the enemy beams. Hitting that, we ain't gonna get anywhere. We won't get killed. The final game in the series that contains the adventurer, Sir Arthur Pendragon. Okay, we... It's the final title to feature the aristocrat adventurer, Sir Arthur Pendragon. The game is... Pendragon. The game is the final title to feature the aristocrat. Aristocrat. It's an aristocrat, Jamie. First thing we've got to do is deactivate those electricity beams. We do that by standing on a star. This title was the final title to feature the, the aristocrat. Arist Jamie, it's an aristocrat. Aristocrat, not aristocrat. First thing we've got to do is deactivate those energy bars. Jamie, they're electricity bar. They're electricity beams. This title features the aristocrat. Uh, Aris Jamie isn't aristocrat. 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 I've said that wrong about. I've said it wrong about twenty times. Arist aristocrat. 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 First, thing we've got to do is deactivate those electricity beams. We do that by standing on the star. It's the final title to feature the aristocrat. Aristocrat, Jamie, aristocrat, it's an aristocrat, the feature, the aristocrat, aristocrat, Ar aristocrat, I can't say that, aristocrat, aristocrat, 
to feature the aristocrat. It's the final title to feature the aristoc arist aristocrat. Jamie, it's aristocrat. My gosh. Aristocrat. 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 Do that by standing on a star. This title is the final title to feature the aristocrat adventurer Sir Arthur Pendragon. The game was created by brothers Dave and Robert Thomas. Right. Did you activate the electric bars? Beams, Jamie. Beams. Electric beams, man. Oh. First thing we've got to do is deactivate those electric electric <laughs> First we gotta do is deactivate those electricity bars. Jamie, they're not bars. Bars is what you have if you're in a jail. Go into a prison, yeah you're gonna see bars, not energy bars. That is prison cell bars. Uh. First we gotta do is deactivate the electrical beams. We do that by standing on the star. It's the final title to feature the arist arist We're doing this again, Jamie. Aristocrat. Aristocrat. My goodness, there's so many outtakes here. Do that by standing on the star. It's the final title to feature the aristocrat adventurer, Sir Arthur Pendragon. The game was created by brothers Dave and Robert Thomas. Okay, we activate the... Jamie, you... You deactivate the energy beams, which you've already done. Wally, but we do have a energy bolt. It's not an energy bolt, Jamie. It's an energy orb. No, we're not. It's a magical orb, you twonk. Now use the arrow keys on the keyboard to select what one you want. At the moment, we don't have a spade, but we need to select it by using a electrical. Jamie, it's not electrical. It's a magical. My lord, Jamie, you're making so many mistakes here. It's called a magical orb. This will allow the player to throw an orb at enemies in the direction you are facing. This cannot be used with the electrical cloak. There we go. I do like the game over section, I have to admit. So there we go, your soul becomes theirs. 